I'd like to welcome everybody to our second Master Cheese class. I'm Ali DeBold. I'm co-founder of ChickAdvisor.com. Welcome to everybody tuning in at, on YouTube live. And to everybody in our studio audience, welcome. Can you get a little cheer? Excitement? Yeah. <laughs> Very excited to be here with our celebrity chef, Christine Cushing, um, to celebrate our love of Canadian cheese. Um, today, Christine is going to be making three amazing dishes with Canadian cheese. And before we start, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. First of all, when you are shopping for cheese, you need to look for the blue cow. That is how you know that you are buying 100% Canadian cheese, which is made with Canadian milk known for its purity, quality, and great taste. And also, I uh, wanted to highlight for you the All You Need Is Cheese magazine. This is something that's available in select uh, grocery stores, has lots of great coupons for Canadian cheeses and features some of the uh, Grand Prix cheese winners. And for everybody tuning in at home, I have a couple of quick instructions. So we're going to be doing some prizes throughout the broadcast. And what we're looking for is for you to use the hashtag Master Cheese Class and snap pictures of your beautiful creations as you cook along with Christine. Christine is going to be doing live Q&A, so if you have questions, please tweet them at Chick Advisor. Use the Master Cheese hashtag, hash, hash, <laughs> Master Cheese Class hashtag. There, I got it. Um, and we're going to be answering your questions live as many as we can. Um, if you need to pause your feed at any point to catch up with us, you can do so. And without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Christine. Thank you so much, Ali. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming into the studio. This is, uh, this is my sweet spot. This is what I love to do. Cooking and cooking with people is great. And of course, for you at home, um, you know, this is the opportunity for you guys to cook along with us. So first, I want to tell you about the three recipes that I'm making. And the theme that I wanted to share with you about today's class uh, is really about sharing. And for me, food is not really just a series of ingredients that you put together. It's stuff that you're going to share with people, that people are going to respond, they're going to have great uh, emotion about it, and that's what food means to me. So the theme of all the recipes is sharing, getting together, and not individual dishes. So first that I'm going to be making is a creamy cheese fondue. I don't want to say winter's coming, but it's coming, so we know that. Uh, so the fondue is a really simple thing. It's a great thing for a holiday get together. It's a really simple and it's going to really show off the gorgeous flavors of the cheese. So that'll be the first thing I'm going to demo. You guys in the studio will get to taste it, but you're not going to be making it. You're just going to watch me and then you can try it at home, invite your friends over. Number two thing is, I'm going old school here. It's a classic cheese souffle. So I'm going to take you way back to my very first job in hotels, which was making soufflés. It was crazy. Uh, there were many burns and much insanity. But the souffle is that thing that once you make it for your friends or your family, you just realize how simple it is, but how much wow factor there is. So I wanted to, to really convey that message as well. And last but certainly not least, we're going to make some ricotta nudi. And nudi is a more kind of a different version of a, uh, a gnocchi, which really is made with potatoes. Here we're featuring ricotta, which is an awesome cheese, uh, and you're going to love these. Actually, Brianne, who's assisting today and who's the fabulous chef in at Nella, uh, she made them for the first time, and she says, oh, my God, they're so great. So I have so many things to share with you about that. That's going to be the last thing that we do. So with no further ado, let's start on a little cheesy, creamy souffle. So first of all, souffle, uh, sorry, fondue. I'm already, I'm already thinking of the souffle. So the fondue just means melted in French. And the idea of, it can't be much better, white wine and cheese together. That's all you have going in here. A little bit of flour to bind the cheese. So what I've chosen here is a Riesling, a Canadian wine. You want to make sure you use a dry white wine. You don't want any sweet notes because you really want a little bit of acidity to balance the sweetness of the cheese. And I'm just going to bring it to a boil here in a, a small pot. Over here, I've got the grated raclette. And this is a uh, Canadian raclette. The word raclette, you have to do that. You have to feel like you really got, it's phlegmy. It's way down in your throat. But it comes from the French word racle, which means to scrape. So this is something that in alpine regions, you have, imagine this hot cheese or this cheese and you take like a little uh, knife, it's hot and it just scrapes and you get this beautiful ooey gooey texture. So really I'm using this to make the souffle and you're gonna coat it with whatever really you like. Here we're gonna use some beautiful baguette, 
you can also do uh, broccoli, you can do cornichon, you can do potatoes, anything that you love enrobed in cheese. So, low temperature on my boiling. I have a little bit of extra wine here for me if I have to drink it, uh, but also if I've evaporated too much, that means that I'm blabbing too much and not cooking enough. So once that comes to a nice gentle simmer, I'm gonna take the grated beautiful raclette cheese and I'm gonna blend in some flour. And all this is doing is going to create a texture that once it's melted, it's going to stay together. So you want the fat and the creaminess all to make this beautiful unctuous coating for whatever it is that you're going to dip it in. You can use uh, cornstarch if you don't want to use flour, but just that little touch. So now it's this easy. I take a whisk. My uh, beautiful Riesling has just come to a simmer, and I'm going to slowly add the cheese to the wine. Okay, and whisking along. If you see that it's melting too quickly, you can just take it off the heat slightly, because the idea is to make it gradual. That's one of the things to learn as a budding chef or a home cook. You gotta have patience in the kitchen. And, you know, I'm Greek. Greeks in general are not very patient people, but uh, I'm gonna make a really good fondue. I'm gonna be patient with it. So let's just do a little test. Does it look like I should add more cheese? Let's do a little test. What do we think? A Little more cheese? Yes? Is it bathable? Can we bathe in this yet? <laughs> I think we could use <laughs> a little bit more cheese. But the texture is right on the money. Look at that silkiness of it. Is that not something? Wow. I think this will give us all really good skin too. Okay, I'm going to go in with another <laughs> little handful of this. Okay, just going to go in. And like I said, the very first part is the most, the kind of danger point where things could split. If you just a little bit patient, we're over that. And we are in a really good place. Oh, now you start to get that ooey gooeyness of the cheese. Okay, so you can see that, right? How many people wouldn't want to dip a little stick into that with just whatever? Doesn't that look great? So I'm taking it right off the heat and I'm good to go now. So right away, we're gonna light this. This, we used to do this for catering gigs all the time as well, in that situation where, look at that, it's all I'm saying to you right now. It's all I'm saying. Mmm, so good. <laughs> Doesn't it smell crazy? Okay, and then I'm gonna have to do a little tasting. Is it there? Okay, great. So, that, okay, look at the gooeyness there, mamma mia. That is beautiful. Yeah. So once that little heating element is on, our little fuel, that's gonna keep it at the, just the perfect temperature. I put on the little guy on top and then your sticks can fit right in there and you can dip. Now there's some, there has to be some kind of, you know, etiquette for fondue, the kind of double dipping and all that sort of thing. Because the cheese is very delicate, you don't want to have things that are really acidic and juicy going in there. Similar to if you're making something with chocolate, you know, the more you kind of dip and double dip, it's going to alter this beautiful texture of this. So I keep it, the classic is little bread cubes, potatoes that are already boiled. I've added also some broccoli because I think the combination of this cheese and broccoli is awesome. So nothing that's really going to uh, affect the final product of what we have in here. So in the recipe, you're gonna see you guys have it here in the studio, you also have it at home. We're adding a few chives to this because the color looks great and it's just fantastic. So that is a fondue. Okay, so we do have a bunch of questions that are coming from the Twitter audience. Awesome. Most of which are about the alcohol. About the alcohol? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this question actually came from a bunch of different people. Um, they're asking if they can substitute wine in the fondue recipe. Substitute wine for something else? They just want to put some alcohol in this. They want to put <laughs> some alcohol in this. Um, I would say what would be great is something like an eau de vie. So something um, 
like a grappa or an eau de vie, something maybe Pear William or uh, something like that that's, that has a little bit of flavor but not too, too crazy. I wouldn't go with anything nutty or really, really intense because it's really going to take away from the cheese. Right, so you don't want to overwhelm be, the totally, flavor. Totally, yeah. you wouldn't. Uh, you know, things like vodka and stuff have no flavor, so I don't know that that would be a, a good choice. I guess the question choice. is why do you need to put that in your fondue? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good idea. Actually, it's always a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it is for sure. Okay. Yes. Um, at White Nancy asks, can I use a blend of cheese for fondue? You can absolutely use a blend, yes, and and that is a really good idea. You could go with cheddar in there, you could really take it to somewhere else. You just want to make sure it's the same texture. So I wouldn't put something like a brie, for example, in here because it's a little bit too soft. So keep in those same textures and absolutely do a blend. Um, do we have any other questions? Maybe I think I'm going to ask some questions from the audience. Maybe we can poke I in there. I think that's, that's really good. And remember, okay. if you guys want to follow me, so at CC Fearless is my Twitter and my Instagram. So if you want to tweet me or Instagram me or you guys too after this event if you just you know at home going what am I going to do with all this cheese I have feel free to do it um, so go okay. ahead Ali great so I warned these tables here that I was going to be springing surprises on them and asking questions so um, as you guys have been listening to Christine were there any questions that came up for you as you're thinking about how you would prepare the fondue yes can you pair raclette with a cider if you don't want to do wine can you pair it with a cider if you don't want to do wine oh I would say an apple cider, as long as it's not too sweet, that's the, that's the thing. But absolutely, that's a really good uh, suggestion and offer, actually. Um, Christine is, is going to now get ready for the next uh, course. So what a souffle is, it's a beautiful, fluffy, puffed up, perfect Julia Child masterpiece. She loved to make souffles. Um, and the idea is you want to get some kind of a base, it can be sweet or savory. In this case, we're making it obviously savory with some aged Canadian cheddar. So I want that nice sharpness from the cheddar. Uh, and then I just want to make sure of two things. The base is always going to be something like a roux. So you're essentially making what we call a bechamel in culinary terms. So it's a little bit of flour and butter. You're going to add some milk to it and that's your base. And then you can add pretty much whatever cheese you like that has a really nice melting ability and a good flavor. So my roux is off the heat once I've melted and worked in the butter and the flour. And now my trick, because there's so many little things about cooking that once you learn them, you, you say, oh, that's why it's been messing up all along. But here, the best way to make a bechamel or a roux is you take the pan off the heat and you add your milk at room temperature or cold very slowly because this is what I call lump zone. You want to get out of the lump zone. So possibilities of lumps, I've seen many, many people go crazy trying to make a bechamel, but it's so, so easy. So you can see I've got it, no heat on this whatsoever. I'm going to just continually in little batches add this milk. Okay, so when I talk about lump-free zone, do you see that? There are no lumps in there. So now you're free and clear to put it back on the heat. Okay, that's the only thing you gotta concern yourself with. Now I can go ahead and add all my milk because I'm in the lump-free zone, right? The other key to keep in mind here is temperature-wise, you want to be at a medium to medium high heat. You don't want to crank the heat up here because it can be overly, you can start to scorch your mixture. So all I wanted to do here is really bring this to a boil. And depending on how thick your bechamel is, that's going to alter the final texture of your souffle. So off the heat, now what do we do? I want to add these yolks, right? So if I just pour these in, what's going to happen? Everything, we're just going to get cooked egg yolks. So what I like to do is add these one at a time, but I'm stirring them up a little bit like this before I start adding them. And then I want to get a nice whisk. Actually, at this point, I'm going to use my rubber spatula because I'm off the heat. Just I'm going to take a couple of seconds to add a little seasoning. This is nutmeg freshly grated. 
If you've never had freshly grated nutmeg, I highly recommend you go into your cupboards right now, not you guys, but you at home. If you have nutmeg that's already grated, take it out of the cupboard, throw it out. And while you're there, throw out your grated black pepper too. No flavor. So this, you take one little beautiful uh, piece of nutmeg that's whole, you grate it, it's got so much flavor. And that's what we're after here. Great little flavor, doesn't take a lot. Okay, so nutmeg is a classic accompaniment to anything cheesy or creamy. See that little mess that I made? It's a thing. I'm pretty messy in the kitchen, but the food tastes so great. I tell that to my husband all the time, and he said, yeah, yeah, whatever, stop making a mess. Okay, <laughs> a little bit of this, a little cracked black pepper. There is a thing that says, when you're making a white sauce, only use white pepper. I say no to that rule. I like the taste of black pepper in a lot of instances, and I want to see that it's there. There are some instances where I would use white pepper, but for me, it's a flavor thing, and I love the flavor of cracked black pepper. That's looking really good. Let me see what else I have. Oh, I have some thyme. Let me actually follow my recipe. That would be good. Fresh chopped thyme going in there. I might be uh, doing the order a little off from what you guys have at your, your recipes at home and in the studio because I just want this to cool down slightly. Okay, now one by one, I'm going to add my egg yolks. So see, I've whisked them and I'm going to stir very gently or very quickly but add these slowly. This is called tempering the yolk. And the egg is such a magical ingredient. I mean, it does everything. It's got the protein. It's got the lecithin. It binds things. It gives things richness. And it's a beautiful pairing with the cheese. They just work so well together. Okay, you can see that. And the smell already is fantastic. So ideally, if you're following at home, this is when you want to take a little precaution. You're probably going to be working, I'll be working ahead of you, but you want to take the precaution at this point of cooling it down just slightly. Okay, but before we cool it down, aged cheddar, how about that? So why did I go for aged cheddar here? I first of all want a cheese that's going to give me lots of oomph. So the flavor, like I said, you've got these beautiful eggs that are going to be fluffy and light and great, but you want that cheese to really impart a nice, bold flavor because you're going to have a lot of egg whites in there. So now the cheese is going to cool it down, and but it's still hot enough to melt the cheese, and that's what we want to keep in mind. So just stirring, stirring, stirring. What you have to see are my <laughs> my notes. There's so much egg yolk, everything on here, cream or milk. Let me see what's happening here. So not quite melted down yet, so I want to keep that going until it's nice. Okay, that I think it's just right on the money. The cheese is just about melted, so I let it cool just enough. Ideally now what I want to do Cool it a slight bit before I add the egg whites. So I'm going to let that cool and whip up the egg whites. So remember I said you want to make sure there's no fat in there whatsoever. Stainless steel bowl is the best way to go, or glass. You never want to use a plastic bowl because even if you there's a little bit of residue from something that you made before, it's going to stop your egg whites from mounting. So here, whipping egg white, all I want to do is get it to the point where it holds like fluffy, almost like fluffy clouds, where it's called where it holds the peak. You're not gonna get it shiny because there's no sugar in here to really create that meringue. So if you over whip it, it's not gonna actually puff. So here's what we want. I'm gonna cool down. Oh, I think we have it perfect. So when I say it holds peaks, that's what we're looking for, okay? It's holding the peaks. We're going to do, just cool that down, and I'm going to get it in the oven. Temperature of the oven is 350. You want to use a still oven. 
put it into a water bath. So that whole bowl is going to go into a water bath. Last stage, all we're going to do is fold in these egg whites. So a good trick, add a little bit of the egg whites. And this is what's called softening it. Just do a little whisking like that. And then folding gently, but quickly. The more mess you make for this, the better it's going to be. Just my, just my feeling. <laughs> okay, so folding is going in, around, in and around. Just imagine it three-dimensionally like that. And then I'm just going to pour it in and make sure that I don't over whip these egg whites. I want the whites to still be fluffy. So that's what I want. I'm going to pour it in here. 350 for about 25 minutes or so, but we're going to keep our eye on that. Okay. So we have some questions. We can go ahead. Yes. So I lied. I said we weren't going to interrupt, but the questions have come in, and I guess the souffle is a little bit more complicated. Yes. So um, <laughs> yes. we couldn't stop and, and not have any questions. Okay. No problem. Go um, ahead. Okay, so I've got a bunch of them here. Um, Go ahead. At Liz Holstrom asks, are souffle like a, Lor a Yorkshire in terms of no peaking? Like if it's too delicate, do you have to leave it alone? Uh, souffle is definitely like a Yorkshire and no peaking. No breathing, no tap dancing, <laughs> no nothing. Once it goes in the oven, yes, absolutely. If you're, if you're questioning it, don't o whatever, do not open the oven. Do I not, do not open, the, open oven the oven list. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, many awesome. users are also really curious about how to ensure it doesn't collapse. So yes. are there some tips in how to make sure it doesn't or, collapse? Or it doesn't collapse. Okay. Yeah. So collapsing, it happens, it collapses. Uh, once you take it out of the oven, it's going to start to go down. There's nothing you can do about that. So once it comes out, it's almost like the souffle is the star of the show. We wait for souffle, souffle doesn't wait for us. <laughs> so once it comes out, you, you do the big oohs and ahs and wows, and then you taste it. So you can't really stop it from collapsing eventually, you know, everything collapses, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, and I noticed that you just added hot water to the Right, pan so there. this is what we talked about, the bain-marie. You wanna, and what the bain-marie does, it's tempering the temperature of this water. So again, you're not doing, uh, you're not just putting it in the oven, you're, you're creating a little bath for it and it just makes it uh, not have as direct heat. So you're spreading the heat out. Great. So let's talk ricotta nudi. I am crazy about ricotta nudi. If you've ever been to a restaurant and had something called gnocchi, gnocchi are little potato dumplings. So this is another version of that that they make in Italy, more in the kind of middle of Italy where there uh, is no potato. Some people blend it, but I love just the ricotta. It really showcases uh, a Canadian ricotta, that sweetness of it. It's gorgeous. What I did, or what uh, Brienne did, she just strained it a little bit so it doesn't have too much of a wet consistency. This is a, a lovely ricotta. It's been strained for a day or so, so and then you let go of the, uh, the moisture. And then, guys, can I just have a bigger bowl? Is that possible just to stir this, please? So all it is is a combination of two eggs. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I don't have eggs. So two eggs and some ricotta and a little bit of flour. I mean, it's so, so, so easy in combination and it can all be done by hand. Thank you very much. So two eggs are going to go in there. And once we do this, what I think is the greatest thing about this recipe beyond the fact that it really showcases the cheese, thank you so much, it really showcases the cheese and it's so clean and simple, is you share it, of course, everybody loves to share it, but you can make these in advance and put them in the freezer. And this can be a great weeknight, running home, what are we gonna make, what are the kids gonna have, and, it's, and you can dress it with anything. Tomato sauce, a little bit of butter and more cheese, like what we're doing here. Very, very versatile. So, eggs going in, and now the flour going in. So always when you're doing something like this, there's a range of flour in the recipe. Here I'm saying one to one and a half cups. So I leave a little bit of the flour, because once you've added it all, you can't take it out, right? So it's good to sort of add it, see what's happening. Is the texture of the room too moist? Is the ricotta too moist? All of those things are gonna affect how much flour it's gonna take. So I like to add that bit there. And then what I do is I flip it out 
I don't flip out, but I flip it out onto one of these uh, little boards. And this is where you really feel like an Italian nonna. You know, you really feel at whatever age you are making these, it feels like that everybody's going to love this thing that you made. Using your hands, gently. And the key here is to knead, but this is not like kneading bread dough where you're applying a lot of pressure. You have to have this beautiful skip to your step. So just gently. What you want to make sure is you've kneaded them enough so that when you put them in that pot, they're not going to turn into a pancake. Uh, you don't want a ricotta sauce. That's definitely not what you want. Okay, so and I always have a little bit of flour on my hands. You don't want to be stingy on the flour. So you see how I'm just rolling, rolling, rolling. My pot here is blasting, maybe at a medium high. And the idea is you just roll them like this and cut them with a nice sharp knife. You can see it's not sticking, it's the perfect texture, I would say just like that. A little bit of flour on your knife, so you can just, this is what you want to have. So this is what the ideal sort of ricotta gnocchi is going to look like. Ideally, if you're going to put these in the freezer, you're going to get a big tray, just some flour all over it. Don't be afraid of using flour. You're going to freeze them on that tray, and then once they're frozen, you can stack them in a bag and, and seal them and close them or a container, okay? So I think that that's, I'm very happy with those. What I'm going to do now is, the exciting part, boil them. So we want to have a nice thorough amount of water in our pot. Uh, maybe I should do this here. So, please, thank you very much. So we'll do that. So I'm going to put the, the nudie in the back. It's going to only stay in the water for three to five minutes, maybe four minutes ideally. So it's not going to absorb a lot of that salt. So when you see that you're adding a lot of salt to it, it's not really going to be absorbed by your uh, nudie or whatever it is that you're making. So Brianne, if we can get the frozen ones, just again, they need to sit for a little bit. I, I don't want to throw these in and have them go boom. Not good. Thank you. So now, sauce. Easy. So easy. A little bit of butter. Garlic. Thank you. A little bit of butter. So the idea with this sauce is it's not really a sauce. It's just an, her an herb butter. An herb butter? A herb butter. Uh, two cloves of garlic. I like to make this garlicky, and it's almost like an Italian sauce called aglio olio. It's like only it's butter instead of olive oil. The garlic, the butter, the ricotta, so delicious. All right, that's looking perfect. I'm going to throw a few in. Are you guys ready? You ready? Okay, because you have to make these after. You know, it's all fine and dandy, but you guys have to all make them. And at home, you should be starting to get these things together. Uh, when you're making these, don't crowd the pot. It only takes three to five minutes. We're not going to strain this water out. I love for you to have something like this. So either a, a Chinese, I would call this um, a spider, but a, a Chinese strainer, uh, anything like that. So you don't actually have to strain this out, okay? Because the water is going to stay nice and hot. I'm at a nice boil now, not too hot. This is looking great. As soon as I throw that garlic in, I want to keep my eye on it because garlic, you know what happens, it burns temperature, but this is going to really bring it home because all you can smell now is crazy garlic butter. Oh my God. All right. And the simplicity of this combination, I mean, it's ricotta, eggs, and flour. That's all that's in it. And sometimes it's the simple things that are great. Okay, what do you think? Shall we, shall we toss? Is it time? It's time. Okay, I'm just gonna fish these out. And then this, this also, this process of tossing them in the sauce. I wanna see this in here. I wanna see you guys in here tossing. Uh, lots of fresh herbs. You can't go wrong with fresh herbs here. Just before it's gonna go in. Fresh parsley. So this is, 
what we're talking about, right? Look at these amazing little nudie. Enrobed individually in a little garlic. Then, of course, what does it need? A little more Parmesan just delicately sprinkled on top. Am I hearing oohs and ahs there? Okay, a little bit more cracked black pepper. And that it is the ricotta nudi with garlic herb butter. All right, let me do a little taste. It smells amazing. Oh, it's crazy. There are wow. no words. <laughs> there are no words. It's so good. So good. Great. So lovely texture, flavor, everything kind of sings. There's nothing out of balance, and you will not be able to put this down. Okay. Um, at Cher Boudreaux, or actually yes. it's at Raven Brand 20, okay. wants to know, um, do you strain the ricotta with cheesecloth for the ricotta nudie? Do you yes. need to? Yeah. Yes. It's good. That we just want to look at this oh, look because at it looks so <laughs> great. I love that you stopped to take a picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to do it that. It is a beautiful oh, thing. Looks amazing. You know what? Cheese souffle waits oh, for no one, but doesn't that look great? That's what you said. That looks amazing. Yeah. We got to pull it out. So you guys want to see the final cheese souffle coming out of the Get oven? Final shot here of Ready? the souffle. You guys want to it's see? It's going to be a, like, okay, thank you. It jiggles a little bit. So we want to do that maybe so you have a, yeah, so we this pull it. Yeah. Because it's just going to go down, right? Just okay. want to point out that uh, at Svetlana V Y A Z yes. um, took a picture of her nudie and it looks like a professional. It looks amazing. Does it really? Look at that. Oh my God. Isn't that gorgeous? That is incredible. Tell her that, amazing. that's incredible. I don't know if you guys can catch who, this. But who this is that? Is, that's incredible. This is worthy of, of yeah, being posted. That should be in a magazine right there. <laughs> that belongs in a magazine. Good job. Mm. So if, if you guys can pull this away, I'll yeah. lift this up and I think we'll be good. Thank you. That's that's like brain surgery there. Oh la la. Uh, Christine, is it yes. all right if we have another couple of questions? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so at beautyvixen.ca wants to know, can I dust the nudie in flour and leave it in the fridge a few hours before boiling, or should I just freeze it if it's a few hours? Uh, no, you can do that. You can do it a few hours. It's not a problem. Absolutely. Dusting, leaving in the fridge is good. Would it even overnight or would that be too long? I wouldn't go overnight because then you're going to get a skin on the outside. What the freezing does is it's going to cool them nice and quickly, but a, a few hours is not going to be a problem. But overnight they're going to get a skin and then it's not going to be the same. That makes sense. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. And I think that the uh, studio participants are going to start. Oh yeah, they should. They should now. definitely. Please start. Don't fall back. Yes. really impressed with the quality. Thank you all for your questions. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. Taking us through this. Yes, uh, just as much fun, if not more, than last time. And thank you to Dairy Farmers of Canada for making this possible. We had a blast. Just want to remind you guys, make sure that when you're purchasing cheese, you're looking for the, the symbol of the blue cow. That's how you know that the cheese is made with 100% Canadian milk. And thank you so much to the Chick Advisor members and everybody in studio. And uh, good luck and bon appetit. Thank you.